அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் வாம் கிரிட்டிங்ஸ் டு ஆல் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் த இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் டு டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோபி த ஸ்லைட்ஸ் வில் பி இன் இங்கிலீஷ் அண்ட் த ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் வில் பி பைலிங் வெல் இங்கிலீஷ் அண்ட் தமிழ் ஸோ இந்த ப்ரெசன்டேஷனை பொறுத்தவரைக்கும் டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் உடைய இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் மட்டும்தான் பார்க்க போகிறோம் ஸோ இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் இன் த சென்ஸ் டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் மைக்ரோஸ்கோபி அப்படின்னா என்ன அதில் உள்ள லென்ஸ் சிஸ்டம் என்ன அது எப்படி இமேஜ் ஃபார்ம் பண்ணுது டைஃப்ராக்ஷன் பேட்டர்னா என்ன ஸோ டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் உடைய அட்வான்ஸ் வெர்ஷன்ஸ் என்னென்ன ஏ அட்வான்ஸ் வெர்ஷனுக்கு போகிறோம் ஸோ இதோடைய இமேஜ் டிஃப்ரென்சஸ் இவ்வளோ தான் ஏற்கனவே இன்னொரு ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் வீடியோ லெக்சரில் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் உடைய இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் எல்லாமே நான் கொடுத்துருந்தேன் இந்த ப்ரெசன்டேஷனை பொறுத்தவரைக்கும் டிஎம் பற்றின ஜஸ்ட் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் மட்டும் தான் பார்க்க போகிறோம் அடுத்தடுத்த சில ப்ரெசன்டேஷன்ஸில் இன் டெப்த் டீட்டெயில் பார்ப்போம் ஸோ ஒரு பேசிக் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் வேணுன்றவங்களுக்காக மட்டும்தான் இந்த ப்ரெசன்டேஷன்ஸ் நாட் ஃபார் த அட்வான்ஸ் யூசஸ் ஸோ என் வி சி த லைட் மைக்ரோஸ்கோபி டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோபி அண்ட் ஸ்கேனிங் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோபி இந்த மூணு மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் உடைய ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா கிட்டத்தட்ட லைட் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப்பியும் டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப்பியும் சில விஷயத்தில் ஒத்து போக ஒன்று கண்டன்சர் லென்ஸ் சிஸ்டம் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் லென்ஸ் சிஸ்டம் அண்ட் ப்ரொஜெக்டர் லென்ஸ் சிஸ்டம் கண்டன்சர் லென்ஸ் சிஸ்டம்னா என்னென்னா வரக்கூடிய ஒழிக்கதிர்கள் அது லைட் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப்லய மைக்ரோஸ்கோப்ல ஒழியாக இருக்கட்டும் இல்ல டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் இல்ல எலக்ட்ரான் கதிர்கள் ஆகட்டும் ஸோ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கண்டன்சர் லென்ஸ்ன்றது அந்த பேர் என்ன சொல்லுதுன்னா குவிக்குது குவிமயப்படுத்துவது கண்டன்ஸ் த பீம் போக்கஸ் த பீம் அப்படின்ற அர்த்தத்துல தான் இந்த கண்டன்சர் லென்ஸ்ன்றது பயன்படுத்தப்படுது ஈவன் இன் ஸ்கேனிங் எலக்ட்ரான் மைக்ரோஸ்கோபி ஸோ வாட் எலக்ட்ரான் ரேடியேஷன் ஆர் த லைட் ரேடியேஷன் கமிங் இன் ஸோ த கண்டன்சர் லென்ஸ் சிஸ்டம் இஸ் get the source or radiation and makes it converge to fall into the sample right so the next one the objective lens system objective lens which is placed near to the object so which is like first magnification lens system inga da first magnification nadakudhu then projector lens la vandu ulukku further very big magnification or largest magnification is getting up here ore vithyaso transmission electron microscope ko scanning electron microscope pathina scanning coil iruke after condenser lens so the scanning coil vande beam scan pannu sample mele so it it's it access a like scanner then the electron falls into the sample இந்த சாம்பிள் இருந்து வரக்கூடிய சிக்னல்ஸ் வந்து டிடெக்டருக்கு போகுது டிடெக்டர்ஸ் ஆர் லைக் தெர் ஆர் வைட் வெரைட்டி ஆஃப் டிடெக்டர்ஸ் அது நம்ம ஸ்கேனிங் எலக்ட்ரிக் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் உடைய இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் பார்க்குற வீடியோ லெக்சரில் பார்ப்போம் ஸோ இப்போதைக்கு இந்த டிஃப்ரென்சஸை மட்டும் புரிஞ்சுக்கோ ஸோ வி வில் கோ இன் டு த டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் எலக்ட்ரிக் மைக்ரோஸ்கோபி ஃபர்தர் ஸோ த டிரான்ஸ்மிஷன் எலக்ட்ரிக் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் உடைய முக்கியமான கோணம் என்னென்னா ஸோ த வேவ் லென்த் that is the lambda of a fast electron at an accelerating voltage e kv is given by the formula of this one with this when the accelerating voltage is getting increased the wavelength is getting decreased for example with different accelerating voltage from 100 to 1000 there is a difference in wavelength of electron waves so உதாரணத்துக்கு நம்ம இப்ப மோஸ்ட் அட்வான்ஸ் சிஸ்டம் எல்லாத்துலயும் ஒரு த்ரீ ஹண்ட்ரட் கேவி ஆர் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் கேவி தான் பயன்படுத்துறோம் இதுல பாத்தீங்கன்னா வேவ் லென்த் வந்து இட் இஸ் இந்த டென் பவர் மைனஸ் டுவெல் மீட்டர் ரேஞ்சில் இருக்கு ஸோ ஒரு ஆட்டமுடைய ரேஞ்ச் வந்து ஆங்ஸ்ட்ராங்ல இருக்கும் பொழுது வேவ் லென்த் ஆஃப் இன்கமிங் ரேடியேஷன் டென் பவர் மைனஸ் டுவெல் இருக்கிறதுனால இட்ஸ் ஷுட் பி ஏபிள் டு வியூ த அட்டாமிக் கான்டஸ்ட் அதான் அந்த கான்செப்ட் ஆப்டிக்கல் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் பற்றி பார்க்குற பார்த்த முதல் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன்ஸில் வீடியோ லெக்சரில் பார்த்துருப்போம் ஸோ வேவ் லென்த் இஸ் அ லிமிட்டிங் ஃபேக்டர் இன் கெட்டிங் த ரெசல்யூஷன் ஆஃப் எனி மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் ரைட் ஸோ வி நீட் டு பிரேக் தட் வேவ் லென்த் லிமிட்டேஷன் ஃபேக்டர் இங்கே அக்சல்டேஷன் வோல்டேஜ் அதிகமாக இருக்கிறதுனால வேவ் லென்த் ஃபேக்டரும் ஒட்டச்சிட்டு நம்ம அட்டாமிக் ரெசல்யூஷன் வரலும் வி கேன் ஏபிள் டு ஃபர்தர் ஃபார்வேர்ட் 
So anyway, in the slide, I put the uh, difference in thermionic emission and difference in field emission. But the first presentation, liye paathir ko. So mostly, it will not be very detailed. Po khala, it and the presentation le rakhar thena le. But in simple term, for the thermionic emission, tungsten and lanthanum boride guns are used. Old TMs have tungsten guns, and new TMs have mostly with lanthanum boride. So advanced TM system with stem. And further monochromators have using Scotty FEG and Cold FEG. So with this difference, I am moving to another slide. Another in the slide like we can electron matter interactions. Pati patro gontrim ba. So when the primary electron is coming in, it have it it reaches the sample and it with different interaction volume it raises or gives away different signals. So the secondary electron. And backscatter electron is the one scanning electron microscope will use. Pondro. So, this is the introduction to microscopy slide. So, what the difference we are noting here again is if this is a sample, the signals which gets on, on the top of the sample is related to the scanning electron microscope. Once it is transmitted, and there are some possibility for different signals, the TM is using. Basis on those signals. All right, so we will move to another uh, slide. So this is the transmission electron microscopy first developed by Ernst Ruska in 1933. He was awarded Nobel Prize for this in 1986. So when we see this image, we laugh. But when we see equivalent images in TM, we publish. So in the end, in the Slide of Andana, Ella presentation Lee Carter the Karno. The TM image is actually not directly related. Like in SEM, Lavandaning or morphology, which texture, which is a kind of decline within Girki, the particle size is in it. But in TM, and it's a little complicated in understanding and analyze, analyzing the image. So if a particular and hippopotamus are given, Renda would not go to the TM. So when we see this image, we laugh. But we, when we see equivalent images in the TM, we publish. So in the slide, a schematic of major components of TM. So of course we know uh, the basic schematic already. Uh, then we will go into detail how these lenses are used and what are its functionality in later stages. But however, in this slide, uh, in TM, the sample is inserted like this through this hole with the help of the holder. And the holder can be single tilt or double tilt. One or two can tilt the sample. If the sample is sampled, the position is in the position of the holder. The two angles are in the different angles. So, this is mostly in the diffraction pattern. The zone axis alignment set is in the zone axis alignment set. The double tilt holder is more useful. If we use single tilt, we can use the EDS detector. It's mostly fixed around 15 degree towards the sample. Sample holder when you have 15 degree or angle alpha tilt, it gives more signal to the ADS detector. So of course it varies from system to system. But mostly this is general case for a FEA system at least if I know uh, rightly. So we'll see more into the inside uh, transmission electron microscope. So uh, the transmission electron microscope can be you either it is field emission gun or uh, thermionic emission gun. There is a sharp filament below which is a penalt cap. So this filament is connected to minus 300 kV or like in 200 kV system it is minus 200 kV. So the final uh, stage in the acceleration stack is grounded to 0 kV, right? Then there are some plates which comes in here. It's extended towards panel cylinder. Sorry, yeah. So all these plates are actually connected by the resistor. So it creates an internal electric field here. So all this plate due to the potential differences here 
is minus 30 something then it keeps on increasing and ends at minus 270 kV so the vanilla cylinder is slightly negative by us meaning it is minus 300 minus delta V so because of this there is a slightly negative bias there's a slight electric field around here and then when the electron is coming out it sees the electric field then it's get cross over then again it gets accelerated because of the difference in electric field then it gets cross forward somewhere here and goes to the lens so this is how the functionality of TM which is from the filament through vanilla cap and towards accelerating stack so then comes the condenser lens and objective lens system so this is how the transmission electron microscope gets electron and the cross flow of electron beam occurs due to the difference in electric field and I want to tell you one thing that this is a Vanelt cylinder which is the electrostatic lens and the condenser lens and objective lens are electromagnetic lens so keep remember about this okay next and the schematic of major components of TM Patro so the, there are gun system and condenser lens system objective lens system and projector lens system as we see in uh, being um, seen from the first slide so the gun system consists of filament vanilla vena cap and acceleration stack which we saw in the last slide so the condenser lens system consists of a gun deflectors condenser lenses condenser stick meters condenser apertures objective lens system consists of a beam deflectors sample objective lenses objective stick meters and objective apertures then the projector lens system consists of image deflectors intermediate lenses diffraction stigmators and selected area aperture then finally the screen so this gun deflector makes gun shift or gun tilt so the electrons which is coming out of acceleration stack is directed or guided by the gun shift and gun tilt uh, and makes the electron beam to be fall into the C1 that is a condenser lens 1 which determines the spot size so the current around C1 determines the spot size. So the knob used for uh, the spot size determination is a spot size knob within the TM instrumentation. Then the C2 intensity, the current around C2 uh, makes uh, or determine how intense the beam you should get. So the C1 gets spot size. Then after C1, the beam this then it goes into the sample before the sample then it gets again a cross over and falls into the sample so the c1 c2 is adjusted in such a way that whether you get short beam or sorry small short spot with more coherent and how intense it is or how bright it is all these are determined by c1 and c2 then the size centering of these beams is possible by using the condenser apertures. So these apertures determine how much electron should be enter or the electron beam is getting size centered here. Then in objective lens system, it's beam deflectors because we get the beam. Here it is gun deflector in condenser lens system as it is near to the gun and it makes more uh, preliminary determination of how the beam looks and the beam deflector it's it makes the beam shift and beam tilt after the beam is uh, finally determined by its spot size and intensity so that's why it's beam shift and beam tilt then the position z height or tilt can be adjusted here then objective lens 
it's used for focus. So the current around objective lens is used for focus. Then image deflectors make image shift or image tilt. Okay, illumination system. So you moon example could take so one one C1, C2 Matu use Pandro. C1 Kupurake right crossover rike. And C2 when it is not uh, like focused. So in given the it's under focus no chicta, so cross over ille. So under focused beam than kadiko. So the sample when the correct image panna pada the focus focus plane lay ille. But in second example, after C1, the first cross over is right. Then the C2 lens is adjusted to get a focused beam. Then it means here the second cross forward at the front focal plane of objective lens is also nice and perfect. Then it goes about like transmit the objective lenses and get into the parallel beam to a specimen or sample. In other sense, if you insert an aperture around C2 that is like diaphragm, then the beams going out here, it's Get the diverged here or not falling into the sample the remaining beam gets towards the sample so here the small aperture creates more parallel beam at the expense of total number of electrons that is a reduced probe current reaching the specimen so here the number of electrons reaching the specimen is getting decreased compared to the second example where the parallel beam with more electrons so we'll go into the sort uh, of the eccentric height adjustment pakro in any tm when you are when you insert your sample unga sample first insert panavani first adjust panavendiyadhu in the eccentric height adha so eccentric height position that is mean uh, it's a horizontal center for objective lens so that's a horizontal center for the objective lens the sample must be set to this position to do this the entire sample holder is raised or lowered so physically you are moving the sample holder but by by you are not doing this by hand instrument the button system is that height adjustment system okay so you can move it like positive or negative in, in that that means the sample holder is moving up or down so in the tmoda magnification the camera lens setting or the current focus the reference point so eccentric height and it's more important to fix first the eccentric height can be set by adjusting the objective lens current to a specific known setting for a specific voltage and then raising or lowering the set height until the image is in focus sometimes the obler button could use panicla obler button use panic to up a image in nagano obulago so on the obling even then you correct you know so objective lens is with the current of the objective lens or the current of the thing yeah other get a money mother no so of course it's various depends on the different voltages so we look at right side and left side and image okay this is incorrect this is how the correct one so it means in a eccentric plane a cooler okay then the image is focused somewhere here if you set rightly at the eccentric plane and the right cross over the back focal plane the image is formed on first image plan but here the image is formed above the image plan so another one like right focused image you know right magnification Sariana resolving power now the eccentric height adjustment is more important that is a preliminary thing you need to do so we'll see some basic information uh, about the principles of high resolution electron microscopy images here the image formation is an interference phenomena a parallel coherent incident electron beam is diffracted by a thin crystal placed in object plane of the objective lens the electron beams converge and form a front offer diffraction pattern in the back focal plane of the objective lens high resolution image depends strongly on defocus astigmation beam tilt crystal tilt so in astigmation i know the number of the slide la pakka poro 
all these factors cause the lattice fringes to become more or less intense or make them move. For a high resolution imaging in TM, the change in the phase of electron wave as it passes through a very thin sample is used. If the sample is properly oriented so that we view along the column of atoms that is a parallel to the planes of atoms, there will be a phase difference between the electron which have experienced the attractive force of the atomic nuclei and the electrons passing between the atoms. The phase of the electron wave therefore contains information about the location of atomic columns and potentially some information about the chemistry as heavier nuclei will have a strong effect than a lighter ones. In the same way, a thicker specimen will give a different phase shift compared to the thin one. So this slide I just introduced to get some very basic physics phenomena behind high resolution imaging. And then we will move on to the diffraction pattern image and the Fourier transform. So of course, we saw the, all this lens system before, like a few slides before. Then the diffraction lens system comes in with selected area aperture where the diffraction pattern is formed. In the process of forming a primary image, the objective lens produces a diffraction pattern at its back focal plane. So here is the back focal plane at the objective aperture. So the diffraction pattern is a Fourier transform of a scattered electron wave. In turn, the primary image is a Fourier transform of the diffraction pattern. So the electrons of 0 0.07 to angstrom wavelength at 100 kV excitation transmitted through about 0.1 micrometer thin foil specimen or diffracted according to the Black's law that is n lambda equal to 2d sine theta forming a diffraction pattern that is it consists of transmitted and diffracted beam spots on the display screen of the microscope. Although the real diffraction phenomena is due to complex interaction of charged electrons with the periodical potential field of the lattice, Bragg's law or law conditions are sufficient approximation for usual practical applications. A diffraction pattern is in its simplest sense, a Fourier transform of the periodic crystal lattice, giving us information of the periodicities in the lattice and its atomic position. So I want to give you a few practical Inputs. You put in a moon example circuit. There are three examples. So, if you want to get a bright beam or bright field images, then the direct beam is passed towards the object aperture. So here is the direct beam towards the bright spot of the diffraction pattern. So it means the direct beam is going and give you the bright field image. Then the displaced aperture, leave the direct beam, then get the diffracted beam, mark it or place it towards the objective aperture. It means here is the diffracted beam. So the aperture like objective aperture is placed here. Then you will get a dark field image. So this is the bright field image and this is how we get dark field image. And the third example is get the diffracted beam towards the center like in a bright spot through the objective aperture adjustment. Then you will get CDF image is centered dark field image. So this is how we get image by adjusting the objective aperture either to direct beam or towards the diffracted beam or the diffracted beam within the centered position. So these are the three images what we can obtain using transmission electron microscope. So after all these settings of the condenser lens spot size, condenser lens intensity and make the objective apertures everything but still if your image is not focused then it means there are some aberrations. The first aberration is astigmation. 
This abrasion occurs when the electrons in the primary beam are exposed to a non-uniform magnetic field as they spiral around the optic axis here. The electrons must be spiraled around here. If there is a non-magnetic field around this region, then this astigmation occurs. So you will get the astigmated beam like this. So you need to correct this one by using a stigmator knob around the objective lens, which means we're centering the current here and makes more spherical beam. So this arises because the soft iron pole pieces comprising the electromagnetic lens cannot be fabricated with perfect cylindrical symmetry. The soft iron may also have microstructural inhomogeneities which cause local variation in the magnetic field strength. The apertures introduced into the lens may disturb the field if they are not precise. If they are not precisely centered around the axis. Furthermore, if the apertures are not clean, contamination causes charge accumulation and deflects the beam in unexpected ways. So these are the reasons where the astigmation operation can possibly occur. So we need to correct it by adjusting the stigmation knob, uh, which which makes more adjustment towards the current around objective uh, lens. Then the second one is like a coma. In, with this abrasion, instead of a spherical nature, uh, image can be like extended like a comet shape. Axial coma abrasion is a parasitic abrasion due to incomplete axial symmetry of an electromagnetic lens, which is objective lens again. So the axial coma operation arises from the asymmetry of a pole piece bore of a lens, magnetic non-uniformity of the pole piece material itself or the electron charge on the aperture. A lens with considerable coma may produce a sharp image in the center of a field but become increasingly blurred towards the end or towards the edge. So these two can be corrected. Of course, uh, the coma is related to the spherical abrasion, which will be, which we see in the next few slides. But astigmation uh, can be corrected for normal HRTM. The coma can be corrected in advanced TM with more uh, abrasion orders, uh, abrasion correctors system. So after correcting these things. Still, you are able to get only the atomic lattices. You don't get into the atomic uh, contrast directly seeing the at atomic view or atomic resolution. This is because there are more abrasions, which is called higher order abrasions. One is a spherical abrasion and chromatic abrasion. In spherical abrasion, there is like a plan of least confusion. A point object cannot be viewed, viewed as a point instead something like a disk of confusion with disk parameter or disk diameter uh, which can be corrected that is called spherical abrasion correct corrections that correction can be uh, like formulated by using a quadruple or example or octuple within the column uh, before uh, objective lens so here the example is used which makes spherical aberration character which falls into the specimen like in an atomic probe. So this probe makes atomic image contrast.
ஸ்பெரிக்கல் அப்ரேஷன் கரெக்ஷன் போலவே நம்ம அடுத்ததாக கரெக்ட் பண்ண வேண்டியது குரோமேட்டிக் அப்ரேஷன் ஸோ ஒரு எலக்ட்ரான் வந்து இட் கன்சிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் எனர்ஜி பேக்கெட்ஸ் மீனிங் இட் கன்சிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் வேவ் லென்ஸ் தென் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் தட் இட் கண்டெயின்ஸ் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கலர் ரைட் ஸோ இட்ஸ் மோர் குரோமேட்டிக் இட்ஸ் நாட் மோனோ குரோமேட்டிக் ஸோ இதனால வந்து என்ன நடக்கும்னா அந்த அப்ஜெக்டிவ் லைட் பென்ஸ் எலக்ட்ரான்ஸ் ஆஃப் லோயர் எனர்ஜி மோர் ஸ்ட்ராங்லி அந்த த எலக்ட்ரான்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் அ பாயிண்ட் இன் த அப்ஜெக்ட் ஒன்ஸ் அகெயின் ஆர் பிளட் டு ஃபார்ம் அ டிஸ்க் இன் த காசியன் பிளேன் so here the point object is not viewed again as a point object instead it's again a disk due to this chromatic aberrations so this can be corrected by the monochromator system so monochromator enabling reduction of beam energy uh, with of like in scotty feg systems for example so the monochromation can lower the information limit from about 0.7 angstrom to 0.5 angstrom improved lateral resolution for the uncorrected tm information is around 1 angstrom the improved spectral resolution and imaging that is with different in it, like energy spread uh, which is less than 100 uh, milli electron volt so the monochromator system function like this it's mostly filter it and makes as much as lowest energy spread so the monochromator setup is placed after the source and before the accelerator so it's placed somewhere here these systems so with this i want to show you the difference in imaging for example the image a which is image at 200 kv without spherical aberration correction so at 120 kv without spherical aberration correction again where the delocalization is indicated by arrow so when you compare a and b the b is far better right at the same time the third system is 80 kv with spherical aberration correction using a monochromator beam so here you are able to see as much as possible atomic contrast around carbon nanotube so i have also used monochromator uh, so na few slides ku munadi enudaiya publication kaatirundhe tungsten doped mos2 sample so i have used monochromator tm with image correcting corrected software so this is just like a high resolution t but with monochromator beam so in the sample level uh, i want to know whether this graphene is uh, single layer or bilayer or trilayer and my mo is to is single layer or bilayer so i did a fft like around this region then this fourier fast uh, fast fourier transform gives me the diffracted spots like this so here i see six spots ulla vandu or six spots theriyudhu so it means my mo is to is a single layer one then adik veliye pathina three points at six spots right so then i just cut it na so the graphene is a trilayer so trilayer graphene mele single layer mos2 grow irukke adu tungsten doped mos2 nradha nama stem eds vechi erkenave paathutom so i have used different system like stem separately and monochromator system separately to view my image and get as much as possible information so tm use panni high resolution tm use panning na you will get a latest information about the lattice and the lattice distances diffraction pattern kedaikum adutha da so the second system is stem you will get an atomic contrast images then the monochromator beam system you will also get more information in particular in the low dimensional materials like carbon nanotubes or two dimensional materials so in the presentation of portal now we will get tm for the different tms in the image curriculum so all of them so we'll see more detailed tm and scm in next video lectures with this i'm concluding so if you have any questions please mail me to nano.vijaythamil.gmail.com thank you nandri vanakkam